Welcome to the Big Life NYC podcast. I am your host, Roderick Engel. In this podcast, I talk to longtime New York City residents about their strategies for having a great life in one of the toughest cities in the world. Today, my guest is Joe DiStefano. Joe DiStefano is known as the culinary king of Queens. Um, he is a food expert. Over the last 20 years, Joe has been writing about and advocating for the amazingly diverse culture and food in Queens. Uh, he also does public relations for many amazing restaurants in Queens and in Manhattan through his work at Hall PR. Um, you have a list here, so I'm, I'm reading off notes. Um, uh, he gives food tours of various ethnic enclaves in Queens. He's also the author of 111 Places in Queens That You Must Not Miss. Joe was born in Queens and currently lives in Elmhurst. Welcome to the show. Thanks, thanks, Roderick. All true, happy to be here. Did I get it right? Yes. Yeah, I hit it right. Good, I'm glad I had notes. Um, yeah, thanks so much for coming. Um, let's start, I always like to start uh, where you currently live and what you love about your neighborhood. So tell me about Elmhurst. Sure, yeah. Uh, so Elmhurst is a neighborhood that, um, you know, it was in the news during the pandemic. I'm sure people know about it as the epicenter of the epicenter of, of COVID. COVID. Right. Um, in New York City, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In my mind, though, for the longest time, for almost as long as I've been writing about food, I've thought of it as the epicenter of the epicenter of food culture in Queens, you know, so sort of close to Jackson Heights, right. uh, but uh, a pocket of Thai culinary magic adjacent to uh, Jackson Heights. And, and that's so, what, so, so that's uh, Elmer's is known for Thai food for the most part. Yeah, you, you know, so for instance, if Flushing is Queens's larger, bustling metropolis like right. Chinatown. Sure. Uh, Elmhurst is a little more of a bedroom community type Chinatown mm -hmm. that uh, maybe, call it 15 years ago, it started to skew more Southeast Asian. Okay. And now the block I live on is, to my mind and to the mind of a lot of people in food media, the best block in New York City for Thai food. Wow. What's what's the name of your street? The name of my street is uh, Woodside Avenue, uh, dubbed, uh, I believe, last fall Little Thailand Way. They renamed the street. Little Thailand Way. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Sounds. And then um, and you're next to Jackson <coughs> Heights, and Jackson Heights is more known for what type of cuisine? Jackson Heights is it's diverse like all of Queens, but it's really known for... Indian for the longest, but really now for Tibetan and right. Nepali cuisine. I don't know Elmhurst as I know other neighborhoods uh, in Queens. Yeah. Um, what What's the street like? What are the buildings like? Sure. So a lot of, um, I would think they were built in the 20s, but a lot of like sort of uh, four-story apartment buildings, relatively small. Are they, are they single family, uh, two family? Do you know? Mm no, no, no. They're they're apartment buildings. Apartment buildings. Okay. So, so you like, know, like like four family and yeah, and above. exactly okay. that Got kind you. of thing. You know, Got real you. brick, right. old brick buildings. Um, so you don't have a, so many like uh, live-in landlords. Like, well, you know, it's funny. My landlord is a live-in landlord, but oh, even just in because the they, building. they own the yeah. building, it's not that large. It's yeah. it, my building is three floors. Right. right. It's just me and them. Right. Okay. Which is which is nice, but yeah. uh, so on the ground floor, there's a lot of retail, yeah, restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, I live uh, the ground floor of my building. The tenant is a great uh, Thai grocery store called Thai Thai Grocery, where yeah. a lot of Thai restaurateurs uh, shop and a lot of local Thai people shop. Well, sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to get some recommendations from you for Elmhurst. I was at a restaurant. So this was several years ago, a restaurant called Salt and Fat. Yeah. Was that in Elmhurst or that was Jackson Heights? Salt or? and Fat. Yeah. First of all, I love Salt and Fat. It was a great restaurant. There, it was in Sunnyside. In Sunnyside. Okay. It's not there anymore. Right. But it's been replaced by a restaurant that I also love called Philomena's Pizza. Philomena's Pizza. Okay. Yeah. Great right. place. Yeah, I'll look for that. 
Cool. Um, so you referred to, I loved this when, when we were talking <laughs> earlier, you referred to the seven train as the International Express. Um, seven train that goes across Queens, right? Um, so so give us the highlights. What, what would one find if one were to take a tour on the International Express in terms of food? Sure. So, you know, we, we'll... Um if we start from the first stop, which to a Queensite's mind is uh, Main Street Flushing. Right. It's not the last stop, but the first right. stop. Okay. So uh, a lot of Chinese food. Right. So regional Chinese food, not just Cantonese food. So for sure, you know, great food from Sichuan, Shanghai. Also some um, lesser known regional Chinese cuisines like Northeastern uh Chinese food. Um, uh, Flushing is amazing. I yeah, mean, food you, you, food you, you, from um, you could spend weeks there and probably you know just there, there's a lot and a, and a, a lot, lot and a, yeah. and a lot of great street food, a lot of great food courts. Yeah. So um, certainly a uh, well, you know what's what's the, what's the can't miss food court in Flushing. The can't miss food court is the New World Mall food court yeah, right yeah. on the corner of Main Street and Roosevelt Avenue. So, yeah. so if we're if we're here in Flushing and then we go uh, west yeah. to say um, I don't know 90th or 103rd, we start to enter Latin and Central America. So, lots of wonderful Ecuadorian and Mexican street food. Um, and as we get down into the, you know, so taco trucks, taco carts, also sure. stuff that, you know, maybe less familiar like uh, Tlayudas, which is a uh, sort of a Mexican flatbread pizza from Oaxaca. Okay. And then as you go down into 82nd Street, it uh, gets very Colombian. Um, so lots of Colombian diners with big, I don't, have you ever been to a Colombian diner where they have... No, I don't think so. Okay. No. Are so, we still in Flushing now? No, 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 no. I'm right. sorry. We're we're so we're moving down the train. So okay. We've okay. Moved, so what neighborhood are we in now? So we're in Corona at like Corona. 90th Street. Yeah. And as we move down into 82nd Street, we enter Jackson Heights. When you get to 82nd Street, <clears throat> it really starts to get very diverse because now you're on the border of Jackson Heights. You start to see Tibetan restaurants. You can literally stand. In front of homemade taqueria by the 74th Street station and look, you know, to your right, see a Tibetan restaurant right. and there's a Colombian restaurant on the next corner. Right. And, All right you know, there. so, yeah. yeah, so. It's amazing. Uh, there's a plaza in Jackson Heights right by the subway that. Um, Maybe 10 or 12 years ago, uh, they renamed the Diversity Plaza, very, very aptly named. Yeah. And then, you know, um, I guess as you go down into the 40s, it's a little Eastern European, you know, still very diverse. You know, that's, you know, that's the seven line. And then spurring off of that uh, into Elmhurst, down Broadway and Woodside Avenue, of course, the Thai community that I yeah. talked about. Yeah, it's so amazingly diverse, and there's so much. I mean, I've explored some of it, but mm -hmm. there's so much that I haven't even, that I obviously don't even know about. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'm going to need more notes when we're done with sure, this. Sure, yeah. You know, um, you know I actually, I, I discovered you on Instagram. I found your feed on Instagram, and... Anybody who asks me about food in Queens, I just send them to your Instagram feed, which is what Joe DiStefano Queens on Instagram. Yeah, Joe DiStefano QNS. Yeah. QNS, yeah, and, and we'll we'll put all that information in the description. Oh, great. under the podcast, so people, I I highly recommend anybody who's interested in food in Queens follow you on Instagram. I found sushi on me from from your Instagram feed. And, oh, awesome! Uh, and I uh, it was my birthday, I think, two years ago. I took my father and my daughter. Mm -hmm. to Sushi on Me in Jackson Heights. And it was just an amazing experience because we ended up like in this desolate, I mean, we thought we were in the wrong spot, um, but it was kind of this random Chinese restaurant. And then in the basement yeah. was Sushi on Me and we walked in and that place, I mean, that was a party. That was yeah, really no, so it, fun, it, over the top, 
omakase sushi experience, you know? Yeah, it's it's owned by Thai people, by the way. Oh, is it? Yeah, is the, it? Chef, the chef is Thai, and ab- above it is one of my favorite Thai restaurants. I mean, I mean you know, the, the sake was flowing yeah, all yeah. night. They just pour the sake constantly. And now they opened one in Williamsburg, right? They did, yeah. 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 Um, so you've, you've been on a mission for, you know, for food in Queens for, I don't know, 20 years. Definitely predates Instagram and predates being a YouTuber, you mm-hmm. know? So so tell me that story. Like, how did you get involved in this? Yeah. So I worked in Manhattan in, say, the late 90s, um, wherever, downtown Manhattan. And yeah. <clears throat> I lived in Woodside at the time, right? In, uh, call it 52nd and Roosevelt along the 7. Okay. And I would take the 7 train further into Queens and explore a different cuisine from a different part of the world almost every night. So one night it might be Mexican, one night it might be uh, Thai food in uh, the restaurant Street for Five, which many folks have heard of. Back then it was one little tiny room. One night it might be Filipino. Um, And all of this, again, you know, is predating what food culture is now, you know, no social media, you know, so... um, Yes, I read the newspaper, but my Bible was a uh, bulletin board website called Chow Hound, okay. which was, uh, you know, just sort of like um, forums about different um, parts of New York and the Northeast. And I hung out on what was called the Outer Boroughs Board. Mm-hmm. And eventually, um, I got up the courage to start posting discoveries, and that got me into food writing, and that kind of just... Uh, engendered my passion really for culture and for Queens itself. And it all just kind of evolved from there. Right. And then Instagram and, you know, evolved to, mm-hmm. to service you basically. You yes. Know? And do you do, uh, are you doing TikTok and stuff like that now or just very occasionally? I, yeah. I don't have the, the bandwidth to do all that. Okay. So I, so I'm going to ask you what I think is going to be a tough question for you, but for the uninitiated, um, what are the three, like can't miss spots, food spots in Queens. Um, what would be your top picks? Sure. We'll do neighborhoods, you know, so downtown Flushing, yeah. again, an amazing Chinatown. I mean, you could throw a dart and find something good, uh, but one of my favorite places is a place called Joe's Steam Rice Roll. They specialize in uh, rice rolls, which is sort of a dim sum staple. What makes them so good is that instead of using commercial rice flour, they're actually grinding rice and water into a batter, so it has a great texture. Yeah. Really, really awesome. Across from Macy's on Roosevelt Avenue. Jackson Heights, I mean, there's really, there's nothing like it. I mean, um, go to a Tibetan restaurant, order a plate of Momo dumplings and something else, and see what happens. Right. <laughs> and then, you know, I know we talked about um, Elmhurst, and I love it, and I live there, and I love my personal PR client, Zab Zab, which is a Northeastern uh, uh, Thai restaurant that's gotten three stars in the New York Times, wow. and, you know, I wouldn't be working them if with them if I didn't think they were great, but I'm going to completely go off the grid and suggest the Rockaways. Okay. To go to uh, Wits End Pizza, where this guy, Whitney Icock, who has cooked all around the world, makes, for one thing, really awesome pizza, but just great, great food. You know, say he has friends who are commercial tuna fishermen, and, you know, he might just have, you know, um, tuna sashimi or tuna crudo and right. some homemade pasta and all sorts of stuff. It's wow. It's even worth it in the off season to go in the cold. That sounds amazing. Has, has this guy been getting a lot of press lately? Because I know that there's a lot of places in Rockaway that have that have been like Time Out New York. Not sort of. lately, but he's known. He's known. Yeah, yeah, he's been around a while. Yeah. So you you said something before. You said order a plate uh, when, when when we're at the Tibetan restaurant. Yep. We're, we're ordering a plate of what? Momo dumplings, and like see, beef and, dumplings. Momo dumplings, and just seeing what happens, and 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 order something else, and just kind of yeah. take the ride. Yeah, no, and it, and it seems like that, like just take the ride, has kind of been a, 
a refrain for you. Like that seems like how you, you you've operated for for many years um, to discover all this. So a lot, a lot of shoe leather, a lot of shoe leather. Yeah. So so I guess you know obviously you know you're a Queens guy. You're advocate, advocating for Queens. My question is, how does somebody who lives in another neighborhood in New York City find the best food in their neighborhood? Like, what advice would you give for for local culinary adventurism? Uh, keep an open mind. Yeah. And, you know, it's fine to go where Instagram tells you where to go. It's fine yeah. to go where Pete Wells tells you to go. It's fine to go where the infatuation tells you where to go. But, you know, I remember... Um, there was a Szechuan restaurant that got written about by Grub Street, and it was in Flushing, and younger people were waiting online to get in there, and I was in the neighborhood doing something else, and I'm kind of looking at them like, you know, you could just go somewhere else. There, there's <laughs> many other. You're not. You're not in the Rockaways where there's only wits. So yeah. Uh, but I would just say, uh, you know, try try something new. Yeah, take a chance. Yeah, take a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems like you've really followed your curiosity. So yes, that that seems like advice for not just food, anything, discovering anything about a neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. So we also uh, we mentioned a little bit about um, some some of your other interests. Uh, tell me about Queens Together. Sure. Um, Queens Together is an organization that was started by a friend of mine named Jonathan Forgash, and it was started just before the pandemic hit. And so he's an ex-chef, and he decided, you know, I'm going to uh, create this organization to help restaurants who maybe need a better deal on their gas bill or don't have lawyers or, you know, sort of like an advocacy thing. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic hit, and he was like, oh, my God, how can I – help these restaurants. And right. it's like, oh, I can get them business feeding frontline workers. And so the whole thing has sort of morphed into more of a um, food relief organization, you know, that still helps right. restaurants. And, uh, you know, because I, I heard about this. So, yeah, so it was rest, restaurants feeding um, first responders. For, first, first, initially first responders, and now you know people with food insecurity in various communities. Right. You know, so they don't. They'll but, it's, but it's a chair. So it's a charity. So they're collecting. Uh, yeah. D donations to fund this. So right. yeah, they'll collect donations. They have a budget. They'll pay restaurants yeah. to provide food. So some of my clients work with them. I volunteer sometimes to give out food. Um, right. I just had John. I just had uh, lunch with Jonathan at one of my favorite places in Elmhurst, Louis Pizzeria, the other day. Cool. We, did, we didn't have pizza. You didn't. What'd you have? Pasta. We we had ribeye steak, oh, um, wow. agnolata, uh, spinach, agnolati, and um, a chicken parmesan hero. And now we're fat. <laughs> Is there a way to be a food tourist and not get fat? Well, I walk a lot. Right. And, and I exercise. And Walk from location yeah. to location. And, and, that, yeah. and that's why my tour is a walking tour. You know, I, I've yeah. had people say, you know, like, um, oh, can, we take, can, we, can we take the car? No. Right. <laughs> that's not the point. Right. And I also want to get people into the neighborhoods to see. Right. Because it's about stuff. experiencing yeah. the street. Yeah. And, it helps, and it helps me to re-experience re it because I'm sort of seeing it through my guest's eyes or my friend's eyes. So. Yeah. Um, and if people are interested in... In taking your walking tours, how do is there a, a system for that? Do they just sure, send they, you an email or I, they can email me through my website, which is joedestefano.myc. Again, we'll put that in the description. Cool, cool. All right, I think we're getting to the end, but I just want to uh, one last question for you. Mm -hmm. You know, this is um, the Big Life NYC podcast, right? Um, so, what is your advice, food or not food? How, what's your advice on how to have a big life in New York City? I, you know, I have a big life. I'm busy, but I cannot be everywhere at once, you know, yeah. so just be present. You know, I try to, I try not to get FOMO. Yeah. You know, because. You mentioned FOMO in the, before, you know, yeah. Just. Uh, you can't do everything. No. Right. You no, can't I, do everything, and, and so play, appreciate and, what's in front of you. Yes. Of exactly. Yeah. I took the words right out of your mouth. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joe. It was thank, great talking thank, to you. Thank, thank you, Robert. I'm, I'm really happy to have you on because I was like, 
I have to get Joe DiStefano on my podcast. And, and oh, I thank did. you. That means so much. I know. To I me did. and Queens. And Queens. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks.